we used to go in the dance hall every night and Brian and his friends congregated at the door. We just watched them in the dance Just hall. watched, didn't ask to dance Didn't or approach anything. anyone. And all of a sudden, one of his friends came over one evening and he <laughs> said, for goodness sake, come and dance with this chap over here. He keeps on about you all the time. Love at first sight. I saw a real stunner stood over there. Oh my gosh. So I went over and I danced with you, yes. didn't I? And then that's how it all started. Brian and Margaret got married exactly two years after they'd first met at Butlins and returned to the holiday camp in 1965 with their two young children. It was a good place for young parents because at Butlins there were always people to take the kids off your hands. there's a particularly useful chalet patrol service to take care of the babies whilst you enjoy yourself. Well, there was a, like a maid cycling around all the chalets all the time. You had to um, inform them that you were out, you know, and, and you if you went to a show or a dance or whatever you were going to You just give the nurse the number of your chalet. The patrol will visit the chalet at regular intervals, and if the nurse considers you should be called, a message will be sent to you. Redcoat Valerie Nibbs would alert parents in the Gaiety Theatre. We would quietly go down uh, steps to front of house and there was a board and then on that board we put the chalet number on and flick the light over the numbers. Every time a number came up you thought, oh my goodness me, is it ours, you know? And it did happen to us once it did as well. Us once, yeah. yeah. We had to leave. <laughs> Whilst it didn't interrupt the show, yes, there were times if it was a comedian, uh, that could be quite difficult, in particular if he was just going to his punchline. And it could well have been a top performer who was being knocked off their stride. Butlins has attracted some of the most famous names in entertainment, from Gracie Fields to Laurel and Hardy. But the biggest stars of the holiday camps were often young redcoats like Jimmy Tarbuck and Des O'Connor, just starting out on the road to fame. Actor and comedian Roy Hudd joined up at Clacton after completing his national service in 1958. The great thing was anyone who wanted to get into show business, it was a great start. We shared a chalet, myself and my pal. One side of us was a fellow called Dave O'Malley. And a few years later, he changed his style completely, called himself Dave Allen. The other side was a fellow called Harry Webb. He changed his name to Cliff Richard, and he didn't do too bad, I promise you that. Just like Cliff, many successful entertainers learnt their craft appearing day after day and week after week in front of Butlin's audiences. All I do is 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, squeeze the ball tight, squeeze. TV magician and presenter Stephen Mulhern started out in Minehead at the tender age of 17. Sixteen years later, on Butlin's 75th anniversary, He's come back to where his showbiz career began. What corner is it? Okay, the Tempe. Okay, so keep you on the top corner. Okay, just say go. Go. That will go. How did you do that? It's amazing. You know, I worked as a record for two years. By the end of that two years, I learnt how not to die on stage because you realise what goes down well, why does that get a laugh there, you know, when I'm over this side of the stage or when I'm a bit further at the front, why does it get a different reaction? Well, there is a science to it and no one can teach it to you. You need to just learn it and the only way to learn it is to get a chance to do it. And that's what being a red coat does. It gives you confidence to have the presence to just go, I'm here. You know, it's even just standing here now, I know it sounds weird, but I'm slightly getting goosebumps because you just go, this is special. And a very special moment in British pop history on 